Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name's Damon and I'm back with another Necromunda battle report here. This one's going to be super fun. We've got the smash and grab scenario which involves uh, attacker defender. Attacker's got to get loot crates um, from the defender here. Um, we're going to go with the Necrodamus version of the rules, the suggested rules there. Um, and you'll see what they are in terms of deployment as well. But the exciting thing here is it is Escher against Ogrins. So let's get into it and have a look at those gangs. Look at these naughty boys. We've got the Ogryn gang here, R3, what was it? K17. R3 K17, aka Wreckit. And of course, we have this gigantic leader here with paired augmetic fists, uh, what was it, carapace, and a servo harness, full servo harness. So, very, very nasty there. We've then got two um, Ogryns here, one with the Storm Welder, and another one with a Laz Cutter. And of course, two Lobo slaves here with the uh, funny robot heads, and they've got no weapons at all, um, just furnace plates. So, yep, we're going to have a look at the Escher now. And here we have Choke Stack, previously the Choke Stack Dames, I believe, now just yeah, Choke Stack for short. Um, classic Escher leader here, it's lovely, bright, and colourful. This, this gang actually really like the look of it. But yeah, we've got the classic loadout on the leader here with the Combi Bolter Needler with a Shock Whip uh, and Dodge. We've then got a Death Maiden with uh, the uh, Needle Pistol, Venom Claw, and Spring Up, of course. Uh, a champion here with the um, Chem Thrower. And what skill did you give her? Chem Thrower? Uh, sprint. Yeah, she's got Sprint, so she's fast with that Chem Thrower. Uh, we then got two Jews there, one's with an Auto Pistol and Stiletto Knife, the other one with a Laz Pistol and Stiletto Knife. And I think this young lady did quite well in the last game, setting a Stimmer on fire with her Acid Arrows, and she's a Wild Runner there, so... Beautiful colours on these guys. Escher versus Ogrins. So we're about to get into it. We have the Escher attacking here in a smash and grab scenario against uh, no less than Ogrins. Now, tactics card has already been played and that was an infiltrating Ogrin. Uh, we felt it wrong, or Al felt it wrong, to go with the leader, but we've got the instead, we've got the Storm Welder right in the middle of the board there. Now, the Ogrins are defending these loot caskets. We've gone with the Necr Necrodamus um, suggestion of putting the loot caskets in the middle of the board instead of the deployment zone, because it just seems a bit too hard, to be honest. Um, and we've got six Escher facing off against five Ogrins. Uh, now, there are th five caskets. Three of them contain ammo. One of them contains nothing, and another one contains a frag trap. And the only person that knows what the contents are, are the Ogrins. So, um, the Escher are going to have to try and get more ammo caskets than not to win this scenario. So, they really, they need to get two ammo caskets, I believe, something like that. Um, but now we're going to roll for priority. So, um, yeah, let's see what we get. What do the Escher roll here? With a two. And the Ogrins might have priority here. Nope, we roll off again. It's a tie. Three and a one, so the Ogrins get turn one as we get into it. So, not a lot of action to record in the first um, few movements here, but what we've got just happened here is we did have some other loot caskets. I haven't got any painted up, so I'm just using these markers here. But the Escher leader has moved forward try to open a, uh, a general components casket and of course rolls a one and it's now a frag trap so uh, <laughs> not a great start for the Escher so when she activates um, she's going to have to try and dodge she has got dodge so you can dodge the uh, the blast marker it's possible I've seen it done but we'll see as we make the uh, the rest of the movements around the board so yeah turn one's really going to just be movement I think all around not much shooting going on here Normally when you think of Ogrins, you don't think of the first shot of the game coming from an Ogrin, but we have a Storm Welder here, and he's going to try and move and pop one off down at the Escher leader here. So of course this is, um, <laughs> what's the word? Uh, it, it can possibly hit other people, I suppose. Um, and it's also uh, liable to explode, which it has done in every game that I've seen you play. So yep. yeah, what are we rolling to hit here? Fives, I think, isn't it? Yep. This is a strange weapon. It's got loads of rapid fire. Um, yeah, basically. Not very nice though if it does hit you. Um, but yeah, on the Escher leader here, who's already in trouble with the, um, it will miss though. Um, so there you go. 
not too bad, but she's still got a frag trap to worry about over there. End of turn one, not a lot happened. We had a missed storm welder shot over there, but he didn't run out of ammo, most importantly. Uh, the Goliath, uh, sorry, not Goliath, Ogren leader has moved into the centre there, lumbering forwards with the Lobo slaves. Uh, all the Escher have moved forwards. Of course, we've got this frag trap to deal with in a second. No bottle checks to be made yet, obviously, because um, no one's seriously injured either. Uh, and we've had the Escher champion sprinting a good, I don't know how many inches, quite a lot. 15 inches, yeah, nice. All the way around onto that rafter there to try and get a um, casket. And yeah, that's it. So we're going to go into um, priority now. So we'll just roll off the priority again. Uh, who had it last turn? Uh, the Ogrens had it last turn, I believe. So yeah, in the event of a tie. Oh, well, yep, that means you get it even with a one. So Ooh. nipples there for the Escher. And the Escher get turn one here. So the Escher get priority, and they're using a tactics card here to increase the gas affection, affection? You know what I mean. Um, the gas effect on this guy here, so by two, I think it increases it by two, so effectively making this guy toughness three uh, just for this particular attack. So we've got the chem thrower here going off. Now, yeah, the chem thrower auto hits. Um, there will be no save as well if it's wounded here, so multi-wound targets need to fear this. So, so silly, silly question, does a chem thrower have, must have ammo? It does have ammo, yeah, so you roll the ammo dice at the same time. Um, it is scarce though, so if it runs out, I believe it's, um, it's gone for the game, so. Um, but good tactics card here, if it works, it's a big one. No blind? Um, so yeah, you're hitting, you're just wounding on a three now, so. Oh no! Of course it's a one, but no ammo roll, most importantly, so she can still do it, but that, that important toughness boost there is, oh, is gone. <laughs> so in retaliation here, the Ogryn with the Storm Welder is aiming and shooting at something. He doesn't quite know what yet, because, uh, you know, this weapon is a little bit unreliable, so we'll see what happens, I suppose. There are a few targets that can be shot at. Some of them are in cover, some of them aren't, so I guess we'll see what happens here. So we're randomising here, aren't we? Are we? That's, that's the one. So yeah, we're randomising. This target? And that target, I think it only two that I can see with him. So. Yeah, 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 I think I'd agree with that, yeah. So Should we got odds on that and <laughs> evens on that. <laughs> so Evens. Evens was the chick who just shot him with the gas weapon, right? Um so yeah, we're shooting into hard cover here though, so we'd be hitting on a six. Um, is there a close range bonus? Yeah, plus one and plus and two. And we're aiming. Range. Yeah, yeah, so we got what we're hitting on minus two, plus two. So your natural ballistic skill, I suppose. Five. Fives, yeah, which is great for an Ogryn. Doesn't oh. do it. Ooh, oh, and he's ammoed. Um, now, what is the ammo on this thing? What is the ammo on a Storm Welder? Let's just check what these guys are looking like in the time being while we look at that. Uh, now, it could blow up as well, so that's another thing. Um, so remember... So we just had a look at the rules there for... Um, <laughs> For this um, but yeah Al's gonna roll the ammo check here and not oh I think that does mean that it goes off so does that mean he just goes out of action yeah, there so uh, pretty nasty uh, cool. again comment if we're wrong on that one but um, yeah we have an out of action Ogryn there because he's just blown up now he did manage to reload though it's worth noting so <laughs> he reloaded before he blew up there um, but yeah should we see what the injury is for him because that, that could make a potential big difference there and that's all of a sudden making your tactics oh, card fail feel Oh, he's fine. Does he get another one? Oh, nearly. He would have got experience with two ones. So, so there you go. Things can happen. I mean, the um, the tactics card could have done really well there with the gas weapon, but um, yeah, turns out he finished himself off instead. <laughs> so there you go. That's Ogryn's for you. So hitting on threes as a cover. Yep. There's so we've got a wild runner with an acid bow, acid arrows, shooting at a Ogryn over here with the las cutter. So yeah, you'll just be hitting on your ballistic skill here. So there's no negatives. There's a negative at long range, but it's just your normal ballistic skill. Oh, short range. Shots, is it? oh yep, aiming. So yeah, you get plus one to hit. There or no? Okay. Yep. So I just want to make sure before I roll. Threes. Does and it? Here. Now I think these are scarce, aren't they? Are they one a they single are. shot? Are they scarce? They actually you might have nothing left. Huh. Um, all right. Got the wild bow here, but it does hit, so that guy will be pinned, um, because he's not a Lobo slave, is he? No. Yep, so the Ogryn will be pinned. Now, the important roll here, though, uh, we'll do the wound roll first, I suppose. Wound roll first. In fact, no, do the ammo roll first. Yeah, ammo roll first, before <laughs> So she's still got the bow. Still got the bow. Um, now, does she wound him on a five? You're off. Oh, yeah, five wound. Hey, Yes, nice. Jesus, okay. Does she set him on fire on a four? This is the one I want. Yes, <laughs> so he's on fire, wounded, very, very nice. Oh, yeah. um, Wow, yeah, what can you say? Those acid uh, arrows are pretty damn good. So have you got a save there, Al? No. 
No save there. So that um, will just cause a wound. Um, but he is on fire though, which is uh, always interesting. Ogren's on fire. Cool. Just went on a bit of a journey to find the rules for the frag trap here, but um, we just need to roll a d6 and see if it actually goes off first. So I believe, yeah, a one's a dud. Uh, and a four plus it goes off, wasn't it? Yeah. So nothing happens. So it's still there, so the leader gets to move normally, um, but the trap remains in place if anyone else wants to go near it. So the Escher leader is unloading and she's choosing with the combi weapon option of the needler actually. So she's unloading and shooting the Lobo Slave under the um, under the gantry there. You can't actually see him on the film there, but yeah, we're hitting on a three here because he's in the open. Will miss. Um, yeah, and that's that one. So should have gone with the bolter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of turn two. And well, something happened, and that was an Ogryn blew himself up. Other than that, um, the, uh, the the key point here is the Wild Runner has set uh, uh, an Ogryn on fire over there. So it's looking pretty good. The frag trap didn't go off, so so far so good for the Escher actually. Um, of course, the Ogryns are actually going to have to make a bottle roll now um, in the end phase, aren't they? So, however. Resurgent threat. Your gang immediately passes their bolt test without the need to roll a d6. However, they have got iron will, so it still would have been a five, and I think. Priority. But you get priority as well, yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, the Ogrins will get priority in turn three. What a great card that is! Pass your bottle check and get priority. Nasty. So we've got a Lobo slave getting the priority here, and of course declaring a charge. Um, see how far he goes. So he gets two inches. So he gets a six inch charge there. So. Where's he gonna go, I wonder? Yeah, he'll get in there. So we've got a Lobo Slave probably mulching this poor little Escher Juve, who um, probably should be facing the other way, I imagine, but um, there's no, there's no, um, there's no uh, fighting knife here, so we don't have to worry about facing at the moment. Uh, well, we do actually, but I imagine she would have been facing that way, wouldn't she? Yeah. Yeah, you just, that was accidental, we'll call it accidental. Um, but yeah, Lobo Slave here with his open fists, Hitting an Escher Juve here, so yeah, let's see what happens with this one. They hit pretty hard, but not too many attacks. Hitting on fours? Yep. One hit, wounding on threes, because he's strength, what, five? five. I believe, yeah, wounding on threes. Ooh, now your Escher Juve gets to hit back. She's got a stiletto knife and a pistol, I imagine. She's got a pistol as well. Yep, oh, yep, okay. she does, because she's got a sidearm, so she'll be hitting with one hit with a stiletto knife. Weapon skill four up, I believe. Yeah, should you? And your last pistol as well. So your last pistol is not likely to do anything, but your stiletto knife could can do real dam damage here if you're if you're lucky. Um, so yeah, both of these will be hitting on fours, I believe. So yellow is the knife. Yep. Flex the uh, pistol. Um, so the knife does hit. Um, was that was a scatter dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, um, two up ammo on the last pistol. Not too bad. Let's see if she runs out of the last pistol here. Oh, ah. does run out of last pistol, That's but okay. can you wound him? You really want a five here. He's tough no, no. Toughness six, sorry. That guy <laughs> has got a toughness increase, actually. So, yeah, that would have been very hard. But there you go. They're stuck in combat over there. Now, Trixie, little gas weapon going off here. Now, we've got a shot yeah, over sure. here coming down onto the leader here. Now, he's got toughness six, but, you know, gas weapons don't really care about these things a lot of the time. He's also got m amazing armor, too. Armored undersuit and heavy carapace, was it? Just carapace. Yeah. Just carapace, yeah. So, um... We Ooh. don't wound him because he's toughness six, I yeah. believe. So oh, six. nearly, oh, well. but nice cigar. Um, but she's getting very close to this leader here. Shot him. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a charging Lobo slave into a Death Maiden. Um, so he will get the full three inches there. Um, so yeah, he's coming under the rafters there. If you can actually get your fingers under there, because he's a bit fiddly. This guy, he's a bit big. But he will get into combat with the Death Maiden. Will she survive though? That's the question. This is a Lobo Slave with, again, no, no weapons here. Yeah. So we're looking at those three attacks hitting on, what, fours? Yeah. Not too bad. Now, have you got a parrying weapon here? I don't think you've got a sword, have you? Oh, no, I don't think so. No, you've got the claw instead, which yeah. has got Entangle. Uh, wow! Uh, three misses. So oh. <laughs> does the Death Maiden absolutely mulch him in return? Now, she's got, what, three attacks base, I think? Yeah, three attacks. Three attacks base. base and a needle pistol. Yeah. All hitting on twos here. So what's interesting about this is you get to re-roll your ones. ones on wounding. So, um, But you're hitting on twos here with four things, um, which yeah, is nice. I'm going to have to... Um, venom claw. First. Yeah, so do the three with the venom claw. They will all hit. 
Um, and then you've got a pistol, a needle pistol as well here. So Needle Venom pistol misses. misses. Um, so yeah, three Venom Claw hits. So your strength three. Um, so you're still What's wounding on fives. Boxing? Yep, yeah, so, oh, so it's t yeah, that's what I mean. Fives yeah, sorry, here, right? no strengths, but fives here. Now, no ones to re-roll, but you did get one through. So, have you got a save? I've got furnace plates. Yeah, so, so what's the, it's minus two on the Venom minus Claw, isn't two, it? Yeah. No furnace okay. plates. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just one injury dice, regardless of how many wounds he's got. This is why toxin can be so lethal here, so. Ooh, it's only a flesh wound though, so he survives that encounter. And he's what, now toughness four, I believe. Um, or no, sorry, he's got the toughness increase, hasn't he? So he's toughness no, five no, now. Toughness five. Oh, okay, yeah. So he's, he's almost a Goliath now. So we've got a Juve here. Um, she's probably not very intelligent. She's going to try and open the first crate of the game, actually, in this smash and grab scenario. So she got intelligence of eight, I believe, was it? Yep. Oh, Ooh, nearly, just... nearly, not far. She's a little bit of a bimbo, bit of an Essex girl over there, so she can't quite do it yet. But she could be there all game, you never know. That usually happens. <laughs> what have we got going on over here? The right. fire guy. Man on fire. Yep, man on fire over there is um, going to move 2d6 in a random direction and bump into something. I can't see the dice yeah, there. Three bump, inches. Bump into, the guy. bump into his mate. Can't set his mate on fire, I don't think. But um, now he goes prone and does he put it out? So actually, first things before we even do that, we should strength just roll a strength three hit to see if you wound him because he's still on fire. Ah. So you can roll that. <laughs> cool. Uh, strength three, so just toughness, right? Yep. So does wound him. Uh, so it's you get a f no armor. no armor. So that's that's another wound taker. So he's oh he's, he's on his last wound. So it's an injury dice. So ah. the flames could actually finish him off before he runs off. Another flesh wound. So um, so he's wounded and flesh wounded. And does he put out the fire though? This is the question. He's over here now. Four up. Uh, actually no, it's a three up because he's got a mate. Um, I think. Or I'm not really sure about this. We'll have to look at the rules. But can his engaged mate help him out? Uh, we might have to come back to that one, but normally you get a bonus if you've uh, got someone within an inch of you, I believe. So we'll have to look at that one. Just to quickly clear up a rules query there, um, I'm sure people will comment on this one, but um, I, it does actually say in the rules, Blaze, that you can't help put a fighter out unless you are active. And this fighter is not actually active as he's already been, so we're just going off raw there. So the Death Maiden is going to fight back now. Um, well, she's fighting in her activation, so three with a death claw hit and twos. Um, so, yeah, two hit. Uh, we do the needle pistol now as well. That will also hit. So, yeah, three toughness checks They're all here. the same, eh? Yeah, so we'll, uh, we're actually doing fours oh, now because you yeah. flesh wounded him. Yeah, th this will be the needle pistol. Yeah. Because it matters for the save. Yeah, it does matter, actually. Um, it also matters because you can re-roll. Um, so, yeah, one, one venom claw does go through. Um, and no re-rolls of ones there. So it's minus two AP, so he won't get so, so it's another injury dice there. Uh, in fact, has he already taken a wound? No, he hasn't. No, no, no. He hasn't taken a wound yet, so it's just an injury dice. There, but there we go, so he's seriously <coughs> injured. Um, now, you fought as a basic action, so you can use your second one to coup de grace him, I believe, as a second action. Would you like to coup de grace him? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Okay, Probably that's one XP for you then. And uh, we get to see what happens to this Lobo Slave as he goes out of action at the hands of a Death Maiden. <coughs> oh dear, that's not good. Yeah, so it's a critical injury, that one. So can, can the doc save him? We'll see. Is he worth saving? That's the, that's the question. Ouch. So the Escher Juve doesn't want to be in combat with a Lobo Slave, it turns out. So she's going to try and retreat here. So just a D6 for her and it's an initiative. Um, she will get it and she'll get six inches away. So she can move that far away. Uh, however, the Lobo Slave gets to roll an initiative check here to see if he can attack her back, so five up here. Of course he does, so he gets his attacks to hit her back. Um, so what's he got to attack? Hitting on fours. One hit. One hit wonder. Is it, is it a one hit wonder? Question? No, it's not. So she does get away six inches and she can, um, yeah, she can now reload or do whatever she wants to do. Can she open that? Uh, I believe she can open that, yeah, because it's a, it's a simple action to do so. So you can retreat and do that. So again, she hasn't got the best intelligence though. So we're, we're running an eight here. Oh, oh so close again with a seven. Um, nice, right. nice. Now the Ogrins, worth mentioning, the Ogrins are down to three now, but just look at this beefcake in the middle there. <laughs> oh Lord, he coming. So the wild runner that's done, done the work already is, uh, is now going to be shooting another acid arrow. She's not aiming this time though. Uh, but she will still hit though, which is pretty great. So she'll hit. Now, 
Well, she won't then, that's the question. Would you on a six? Yep. Six. six. <laughs> Toughness six, Robo Slave here. Very close again. Um, but does she say I'm on fire, most importantly? No. no. So it doesn't always work. Um, you can't get pinned there. No. Hey. The Lobo Slave is not pinned, can't be pinned at all. Except by what? Seismic, I believe, is the only thing that would make them pinned, but there we go. So the end of turn three there, we had quite a bit going on. Of course, the uh, as, as mentioned before, the uh, Ogrens are now down to three, so they are bottling quite easily here, really, but they'll probably still stick around because um, they don't want to don't want to go. They want to defend their loot. So we roll that bottle check first. Then. See if the Ogrens actually stick around. So we've got uh, Iron Will here, it's worth mentioning. So um, is that enough to go? I think it is, isn't three, it? Four. Three, four. Oh, good. Three, yeah, you're good, actually, yeah. So they're all good. Um, so yeah, now we use roll priority. Is there any recovery to be made? I don't think there is. So it's just priority now. So you're rolling for this this time. No tactics card. Uh, we've got a five for the Escher. And we've got a four for the Ogren. So the Escher do get priority as we head into turn four. So uh, the Death Maiden is choosing against charging that leader there, funnily enough. Um, so yeah, she's uh, that's probably the only target that she's ever going to be scared of So <laughs> in the whole campaign. So she's instead going to um, stand there and shoot the Needle Pistol off. So um, see what happens with the Needle Pistol here. Um, so we'd be hitting on, what, plus two, I think. So you'd be hitting on twos here, so it does hit. Uh, now you're winning on sixes, though, because he's toughness six. Yeah, six, three rolling one. Yep, no. but he will get pinned, and I think that's what you were trying to do, right? Oh, yeah. So he is pinned there, and because he's close to the edge, does he fall off um, the ladder there? So his initiative is the four up, three, three or four. But he'll be fine. He's still standing there, but you've got a second activation to make there with the uh, Death Maiden. So I imagine she's probably going to walk somewhere. Yeah, she's going to get the hell out. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad strategy, really. Hit and run, hit and run. That's what Asher are known for. Also got the other leader down there. About to open that cape casket down there and another tube over here yeah. about to try and open this one oh. Lobo Slave has just charged this Escher Juve and missed with both attacks so she gets to hit back now but she is out of ammo on the last pistol so it's just one attack with a still out of knife which does hit and it wounds on a five here or a six I believe yeah. um, no so nothing happened there as we see these guys are in combat again so the Lobo Slave just keeps on coming forward moving over here we have the first crate in the game um, has just been opened by this Escher Jew, but what's inside? It's like Christmas, should we see? Should we see what's inside? What's oh, that? okay, that's an ammo crate. So yeah, you do get one ammo crate there. Pretty good, that's what you need. Ooh. You need to get these to win. So we need, still need to get uh, at least another one of them, I think, with ammo in it, not with a booby trap or nothing. Oh. Trying to get some heads. So the Escher leader has opened a crate over here now, um, after the first attempt failed. Um, let's see what's underneath, shall we? He's standing back because it's closing. Is that <laughs> it's looking. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, oh, it is. Yeah, we said the red one was the explosive, didn't we? Oh. So that is a a, a boom there. So um, that will be traps. a frag trap. So there we go. <laughs> does it just go off straight away? I'm not sure it does. I think it's just primed now. So we have to worry about that. So she's loving it in this game. So, yeah. but you do get minus one rep for opening the frag, frag trap apparently. So that is in the um, in the conditions there. But you get plus one rep for opening one of the ammo crates. So there we go. The chem thrower is now bursting um, her wet fart machine all over these two uh, Ogrens now. We'll see if it's a wet fart this time or not, though. The one on the ground on fire is also flesh wounded, so it will wound him. But will it wound the guy who's standing with the... Uh... Ah, so this is for the other guy? Yep. You really want that six on the other guy. It won't, because he's yeah. toughness six, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we just got to roll an uh, ammo check there just quickly. Um, ooh, ooh, does it run out? I think it's a five up on that one, we'll roll it off the top of my head. Uh, I it think it's out of ammo, yeah. but we'll double check that one quickly. Yeah, it's out. It's out of ammo. It's so that, not scarce, Oh, it's not scarce, okay. No. For some reason I thought it was scarce, it's not. But it does wound the guy who's prone and also on fire and now gassed. Yeah. So he's not having a great time. Um, now it's just a stray injury roll for him. Sorry. Seriously injured. So he will go seriously injured and he's close enough to his Lobo slave mate to um, do a call check to see if he freaks out. Um, however, I imagine his call is insanely good. So, five up there. Oh, He's fine, yeah. he doesn't freak out at all. He just goes, uh. But yeah, there we go, Chem Thrower actually did something. So yeah. It does do something every now and then for its 140 credits or whatever it is, maybe even more. 
So again, quite a bit of stuff happened there. We opened two of the crates. Uh, one of them is a booby trap. The other one was a uh, ammo crate. So we've, we're getting there with the Escher, but however, the Ogrens are only three men um, plus Iron Will. So we're having to take that bottle check again here. As our rolls the bottle, bottle dice. The bottle die. Now that will be a bottle check because we have a serious injury there, don't we? Yep. Um, so yeah, that will be triggering bottle rolls now. So we'll just roll for priority first and then we'll have to do those bo bottle rolls, I suppose. So. Yep, uh, on the injury as well, of course. Um, Nine right yep, yeah, you've got some help there. So, so he flesh um, is flesh wounded. So he's now toughness three, I believe. However, the bottle has has gone, so we'll, we'll now be rolling priority to see who gets priority in this turn five. The Ogrins do, so you may as well just roll that bottle check for your leader now. He's got the 12-inch bubble around him, but I'm not sure if he's in range of anyone else. Oh, five up. is he all right? Yeah, he's, all he's all right. Yeah, the leader's got a five up call, so he's pretty pretty cool over there. Um, now we've got to just ch check these two Lobo slaves to see what their call is. I think it's also a five up, isn't it? Lobo slaves five. Uh, he might be within 12. Yeah. yeah, I'd say he's within 12, just not the other one. So the one that's standing. Uh, rolls a four. So he's gone. He's gone. There you go, that's a problem um, solved for you again there. So it seems the Ogrens are doing it all to themselves in this game, really. <laughs> so there we go. Um, so we've got one chap on fire still, a double flesh wounded, and we've got the leader over here, and the Ogrens have priority. So what are the Ogrens going to do with their turn five? Charge the leader. <laughs> yep. So the leader the, or the uh, big man? Oh, I'm charging my leader. All right. He's charging him somewhere, so he got two inches, so he's going to go seven inches somewhere. Where's he going to go though, is the question. Is he going to jump down <laughs> through the middle onto the Death Maiden's head? You can just see poking out the top there. I mean, it would be the fun choice, but <laughs> not necessarily the intelligent choice. However, he doesn't look like an intelligent bloke really, does he? So, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Yeah, he'll jump on the death maiden. Jump on the death maiden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, just your initiative check there. It's um, not high enough what to trigger any minuses. Mind. So, Four. yep. He loves All it. Right. Now we've got a fight on our hands, but we're going to have to move this chunky model slightly out of the just, thing there. Just say it's a new. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's in there. So, how many hideous attacks has he got now? Oh, three base, head weapon, plus one. Oh, Jesus, yeah. So, seven attacks. Yeah, Goodbye. Yeah, so we've got a paired. Um, Augmetic fists uh, and plus one for charging. So yeah, your paired your paired gives you double double your base attacks. So this is hideous. All hitting on threes, I believe. Yeah. Um, wow, that's oh. a lot. Of, oh, oh my god, that is astonishing. Oh, you one hit, me, I'm sorry. mate. I mean, this is this is it's kind of it's kind of funny, really, isn't it? Like that's. <laughs> that's <laughs> good. <laughs> so we're wounding on a what two? Strength seven. So yeah, strength seven only. So that's strength seven. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is three, my oh, God. Oh, plus one, so it's eight. Oh, ah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you do wound on a two, yeah. uh, on the Death Maiden who's got a toughness four. That's now, how many AP is this? Minus one. Minus one. So you have got a save, I believe. You've got mesh armor? Yeah, six up. Nope. Oh, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been insult to injury to roll the six there as well, eight. so. Yeah. Oh, no, she just takes a wound. No, two wounds, two damage. Oh, it's two damage, right, okay. So, just she, one or two? so she takes a wound. Oh, one. Takes a wound and then we see the injury dice. So let's see what happens. Come on. She didn't have dodge, did she? No. No. Hey. <gasps> Whoa, that Whoa. makes all of those twos and ones worth it, doesn't it? But um, hopefully it's nothing too bad here as we roll the injury for this death maiden. <laughs> so tens. What could go wrong? What are tens? Uh, yellow is tens. Right. She's fine. She is in recovery though, so she will miss the next game, but she's got no injury, which is fine. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's I think I was saying earlier, Death Maidens are the best super champ in the game, if you ask me, but not, not nearly as um, terrifying as that guy. Okay, so the Lobo Slave stood up on fire, uh, took another wound from the flames. Um, so he's wounded and double flesh wounded and just bumped into this Escher here. And the Juve has now opened the crate. We get to see what the contents are. What are the contents? Should we have a look? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. You get nada for that. So yeah, there are two more crates on the board and we know exactly what they are now. So there we go. But the Escher uh, have, are going to be triggering, tri triggering, triggering 
a bottle check now in the end phase, so um, that's going to be interesting. So the end of turn five there, uh, we only have two Ogrens left. One is uh, looking rather worse for wear over there. Um, and we've got all sorts of stuff happening really. The frag trap did go off um, and pinned the Escher leader, but she wasn't wounded by it or anything. So that's gone. Uh, and we opened another crate which had nothing in it. So there are two crates remaining, one here and one over there, um, looking like they're gonna get got next turn if the Escher don't bottle out. So this is the real thing here. First, we've got to roll recovery. I don't think there is any recovery to be made. So it is just priority first and then it's bottle checks. So um, in fact, yeah, so priority first, I believe. So four for you, one for you. So Ogrens get it. So Ogrens need to make those bottle checks first, really. So that leader needs a five up. He's fine. And the other guy over there needs to roll, uh, I think a five up too. No, it's quite hard. It's like seven or something. Is it? Oh, he's your ganger, isn't he? Yeah. So he's not a low by slave. He's got the, got the last cutter seven. over there. So we've got seven there. Yeah. Not that great. I thought their call was better than that, but he's fine, he's fine though. He's still in the game. Now it's the Escher's turn. So we're going to start with the leader here. So uh, we do bottle because you Sounds started six. with six and you're minus one. Doesn't that go to six? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, you're right. So it would be a six. So you're fine. The oh. Escher are fine. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it is the Ogryn turn one. Uh, for, oh, sorry, Ogryn's first activation for turn six. So the Ogryn that was on fire is now not on fire, and of course he's not seriously injured either. He's just wounded and um, double flesh wounded, and he's going to stand up with his last cutter with its versatile range and literally melt this uh, this juve. So uh, what are we hitting on here? Fours. Fours. Yeah. So if you hit, you're pretty. It's pretty nasty. I'm not going to lie. One so oh, yeah, I'm one hit. Uh, and I, yeah, my dice with that. Good. There we go. Um, and yeah, strength nine. strength nine. So we're only on a two here. Now that's a six. That'll do it. Now there's the, you won't get a save there because it's minus three, I believe, and it's three damage, isn't it? Two damage. Two damage. Two damage. So yeah, two injury dice there for the Escher Juve. Will she survive? She will oh, not God. survive. Now, interestingly, we can't. Well, we can't coup de grow anyway. There's no point in coup de grow because we roll the skull. So <laughs> there we go. So that is one Escher check out. So should we see what the injury is? Tens. Let's do this one first. Hey, now you want another one. No. Nah, so she's fine. fine though, but she's she's playing the next game. Um, so it's been quite kind on the injury front, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's called out cold though. Yeah, out cold. Um, absolutely fine. So the Escher leader, starting off with the um, first activation for the Escher here in turn six, is going to be shooting her combi weapon at the... Um, I think you're actually out of uh, sort of yeah, out of the short range there, and we're in hard cover too, so it will be minus two to hit. So you're hitting on fives here. You're going to use the bolt gun or the needle pistol. Uh, sorry, needle gun or bolt gun. I might um, use the needle. Needle's more fun, but you know, needle he doesn't like. He still gets in a great save again against it though. But, but if I do the bolt, I'll probably get a better shot later. So I'll save yeah, the. Fair enough. So yeah, minus two to hit here. So yeah, fives. Needle five. Nope. Uh, that will not do it. Don't know why you rolled two ammo dice there. I think there you, you need for a combi. Nah, it's only when you go out of ammo. Oh, right. Yeah, you roll two and discard the discard the best. Ah, so you pick the worst, yeah, exactly. Um, so there you go. Combi weapon just fired. We haven't used the bolt yet because um, we've just been trying to rely on toxin here just because of the multi-wound thing. So we've got a situation over here. We've got two loot caskets that both need to be opened and we've got this leader lumbering forwards and he's about to charge next turn if we don't open it. So the champion has tried to open it once. He's gonna try and try again now. And we do get it with a double box cast there, so very, very nice. And we know what's inside. It is an ammo crate, so we will get that one. Now, I think at the end of this, at the end of this turn, uh, the Escher will be winners by the looks of it, or, or are they? Either gang has no fighters left on the battlefield in your round, the battle of many gangs. Yeah, so you've still got this last card down here that you want to do something with? Does that mean no. Oh, he hasn't been. Um, okay. So reading the winning conditions, the Escher have actually won at the end of this round. Um, we're just going to call that, otherwise we'll be here all night. So this, um, this chick down here, the wild runner with the acid bow, is just going to sort of rub salt into the wound of the Ogrens here, and, um, or acid into the wound here, and shoot a, aim and shoot an acid uh, round into a young fella. Now it will miss, I think, because there's a little bit of cover there as well, So, but she's not great at shooting anyway. But I would say that is the end of that one. Would we agree? Okay.
Oh, we're gonna try and open the crate as well. We do open the crate, so we do get, rip. yeah, you do get more rep for that, actually, yeah. it's worth doing. So we do get another crate. So we got all five crates open in the end. Um, not bad, pretty damn good uh, victory there for the Escher. <sighs> Touch and go there, though, um, but that's that one. So yeah, there we are. Well, folks, that's it. Um, super exciting, nail-biting game there. I mean, even though I wasn't playing, just seeing those Ogrins heading towards you is um, enough to give you the shits, that's for sure. So, um, real touch and go, the Escher, if they'd have failed that bottle check, would have been a big deal, I think. Um, but yeah, the Escher did great in that one. Um, commiserations to the Ogrins, but um, really deserved win for the um, for the Escher there. So again, please like, share, subscribe, um, and there'll be many more battle reports coming your way very soon with this campaign of 10 gangs. Um, so I'm trying to keep up with it. Um, bear with me. I've got a few technical difficulties with the video going all funny and looking strange colors at the moment, but um, onwards and upwards anyway. So peace out.